questions. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat. I'm a founder of Online Seller UK, Amazon Consulting Agency. And today we are talking about um, the role of Amazon optimizers in, our, in Amazon PPC. And we've got Robin from Amazon Consultancy um, called Marketplace Blueprint. Welcome, Robin. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm always excited to get to talk to other people like you and uh, get to share a little bit about what we've been working on and what things have we've been, we've been doing kind of in the last recently and how uh, what we're doing with ads to kind of optimize our clients' listings. Absolutely. So excellent. So um, so let's say look look the topic today is about listing optimization for Amazon PPC. So so give us a little bit of uh, intro on what what listing optimization actually means. So, you know, we started with listing optimization. We didn't start as an ad agency. We started as Amazon resellers. So 10 years ago, we started buying things, flipping them, and then we started working with wholesalers. So we started with kind of, we kind of grew up with the industry and ads weren't even really a big thing on Amazon 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so it, start, it all starts with listing optimization. And we want to remember that, you know, when it comes to Amazon, we have two pieces that we're always balancing, whether it's listing optimization, it's ads, getting traffic to that listing, and then converting the traffic once it's there. And we have to kind of merge those things together. Um, this is where you see like a lot of people keyword stuffing because they're really focused on getting the traffic. But they're not focused on converting that traffic once it's there and through having compelling copy. So with advertising, yes, you can get some really great eyeballs really quickly on Amazon at a much lower price than you can on Facebook and Google. But just like you wouldn't drive a Facebook ad to a landing page that was just a wireframe or looks like it was done in 1982, you, you want to make sure that your listing is optimized because mm -hmm. that's going to be what is critical in making sure that when you get those click-through rates because that primary image for most ad placements is your image for your ads too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, even if you just take the time to optimize your title, make sure you're, you've, you've done as much as you can to try to get those reviews to be retail ready and your images, those three components of your listing are in almost all of the ads that are, are you know, have a high adoption rate right now. Um, so having those is really, really important. Uh, and then if you want to uh, kind of, we want to pull away anything that's going to block somebody who gets to that listing from act actually making a purchase sure so um so then once the listing optimization done um to some extent then we we go on to using ads so how to use ads actually to to get back and optimize the listing itself we the way that we are, the, 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 it always is a circle. So, you know, we have yeah. like a pretty graphic that we use in our agency that we would explain to clients is that, you know, you, you start with listing optimization, then you try to gather those conversions, those conversions equal review. And then it's like this, this circle that kind of goes over and over again. The, the, where people kind of miss opportunity is they create their listing and they think, okay, now it is cement, it is done, it's in stone. When in reality, we want to create the listing and we're going to be basing our our listing off of what we think our demographics are, what we think are the most important things to our customers. Uh, what are the features and benefits that are most important to them? After we advertise, we might determine, you know, that, you know, as I ran a bunch of different keywords uh, at different match types, I determined that, you know, I thought that most people were buying my product for going to the beach. And in reality, most people are using my bag to travel. Or I thought I was selling drinking straws to drink from, but people are making pinwheels for weddings out of them. And there's an alternate use that I'm not addressing that mm -hmm. if I addressed I could increase conversion even more and sometimes those unique selling points are the thing that get have somebody buy your product versus another so if you can very clearly call out or have an infographic that even has the straw paper straw in in like a mason jar with the little pinwheels behind it with the straws so it's something to indicate to the customer I know that alternate use and yes this product will work for that by taking that data you can make sure that you're honed in on exactly Exactly what your customer needs and you know while we're doing that we also want to look at the reviews that we've gotten and mimic the language of the customer you know so yeah. just like we want to use psychographics and demographics in our cop for our landing page and our website we want to do the same thing um, when we're writing our Amazon listing copy yeah so and you've, you've touched based on the titles the key features and um, I've seen your article about images on search engine jo journal actually and that was really good. So talk us through about image quality and importance and different kinds of images that's needed, please. 
Yeah, so images, not having good images and high quality images is basically like just setting up, you know, a, a stack of your products in a store with no merchandising, with no packaging on the label. All the things that a customer would know when they instinctively pick up the product or, you know, if you're going into a clothing store and you kind of run your hand across the rack as you're walking, you're going to pick up a bunch of things about those clothes. Are they high quality? Is the fabric going to be itchy? Is it, is mm -hmm. it nice enough to be worn, you know, for a formal occasion? So we need to make sure the images, you know, really, exam uh, really exemplify all of those pieces. So that yes. means, you know, we want to not just, a lot of people just put, you know, their product in a box, their product out of a box, the backside of their product nutrition label. Yeah. And yes, all of those images are important, um, but we want people to see, oh, look at how much that guy is enjoying that wonderful cup of coffee. Oh, you know, let me, I, I see that that person's using um, this bleacher seat thing in, in a stadium. That's exactly what I want to use it for. This is the product that I want to do. Um, so you want to make sure that all of the questions that somebody might a might need to ask because mm -hmm. they can't physically pick up that product. Sure. Um, and this is why Zoom is so important. You need to make sure that you you have the, you know that thousand pixels on the on the uh, shortest side, the longest side, uh, to make sure that your your image is zoomable because people want to see those up close pieces of the texture. But um, we find that lifestyle images and infographics where maybe you have a cup of coffee, uh, you know, kind of nice steamy cup of coffee in a nice kitchen and the and, and the call out says you know fair trade coffee you know fair trade coffee or it has something that says um you know it, so, this is the the mirroring the benefits that you've yeah. highlighted in the bullets mirroring those in the images and somebody might say well that's a waste of space for repeating things yes and no on mobile you're the only images that you're going yeah. the only thing you see above the fold is the title and the images and people tend sure. to swipe swipe right when they swipe yeah. up and down yeah. So um, by having those images, you can make sure that your product stands out from the rest. And, and look, you should be looking at your product on mobile and multiple browsers if you're <laughs> going to be running ads consistently on products because they look different. And even yeah. Amazon web browser looks different than Amazon mobile. And so you want to make sure that you're doing that on a regular basis. And look how far hard it is to find those bullets on mobile. Yeah, so no, that's, that's cool. And, and, and I agree with you about the images, you know. Uh, previously, when I thought that images, you know, why should I include the uh, key features on the images when I've already described the bullet points? I, I think when I started looking things on mobile, yeah, so it, it's important that, you know, like you said, if, when people flick through, it's, it's, it's important that they see those unique uh, features of the products. And, and like you said, it's there already, right? So it's there in the bullet points. It just need to change them into infographics. So, so it's a really good suggestions there. I, I, I think uh, the next question would be, you know, when to actually do the, the listing optimization. Some people may think, okay, I've got tons of products to list. I've got 500 products to list, not only one. And shall I spend a lot of time on optimizing the listing or, uh, and then, or I just list the product to the best I can as quickly as I can, run the ads, and based on the conversion of the product and do it later. So I think which one would be the best way to go forward? So if you are an established brand, so if you're in, you know, Home Depot and Lowell's or, you know, you're in, you're in multiple stores in the UK, then you can go ahead and get your ad up, you know, just as quickly as you can mm -hmm. uh, because you're going to have a lot of branded search and that branded search converts the best. Yeah. And so you can use that branded search to help you get reviews so that you can be retail ready while you're waiting. If mm -hmm. you are a brand new brand and you need to test a whole bunch of keywords, here's, the, the, I understand the desire to like get the product out there fast, yes. just get it sold. Old, you know, we have a whole bunch of money tied up in this, yeah. but here's the problem. If we start running the ads and start doing the testing, you know, mm -hmm. I, ideally running ads should be constantly testing. Did this work? Did this work? Did this work? Did this work? It's kind of like going to the optometrist, A or B, A or B. If yeah. you are doing that testing while well, the listing is op not optimized, and then you continue on with the, an optimized listing and you don't account for that, you could be 
sacrificing really good keywords that mm -hmm. could have converted really well for you, but they didn't convert because the listing was lacking, not because the keyword didn't bring appropriate traffic. Um, you know, so for example, uh, we had a brand that came to us, another agency was um, launching their product. Now this was an established brand, so they had search volume, right? Um, but they wanted to get the ads running right away. Um, but in the packaging, and, and this really goes down to it's beyond images, you know, making yeah. sure that your packaging is really clear, you know, the, on their packaging, the product was vegan, but it said vegan in little tiny letters. And that was the <laughs> primary, like unique selling point of the product. Yeah. And so until they, they changed that and made the vegan call out much clearer, none of that none of their advertising was really working right mm -hmm. so sometimes it can be a little thing um and so that also means that if you thought you thought you had your listing at a 10 and then after doing some things you realize oh wow i completely misjudged we had a brand that came to us that said you know our customers are millennials and then yeah. when we started really looking at the data it would they had like almost no millennial you know customers they were looking oh, wow. you know really for an older demographic um and so that changes the way that you optimize it changes the words you know if you thought you had a conservative audience and you had nancy pelosi out on front of, or you had a conservative audience and maybe you had a picture of trump next to your pickup truck now we need to switch that because that's not going to work with a liberal audience right so um that's obviously an extreme thing that's, that's not related to amazon but it gives you an idea right so um you know if you have your packers thing uh you know with a different football team colors behind it as the background then that's not going to go well either so you know, it comes down to, if you get to that point where you need to re-optimize, then sometimes it's good to retest some of those batches of keywords. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and also sometimes that means to retest an ad placement uh, type too. So maybe sponsored display didn't work for you and you're like, oh, sponsored display just sucks. Well, you know, sponsored display is not for every product. I'm not going to pretend mm -hmm. it is. Um, it, it, it takes the right product um, for it to work. But you might want to retest that after you get your main image image up and just a quick tip on images I know that you know a lot of times people will have like their you know their bottle of supplements or their bottle of things yeah. and they put the nice little shadow underneath yeah. that shadow makes the image smaller so it's not doing what you think it's doing it's making it so customers can't read your bottle from the thumbnails on the mobile and so mm -hmm. by simply moving that is going to make your bottle look the same size as everybody which is a perceived value issue right yeah, uh, yeah. and it's also going to make sure people can read the call outs on the product excellent so excellent so thanks for sharing all these tips and really really useful so with uh, different tools that, that may be necessary to optimize. So what sort of tools do you suggest to, that a seller can use? There's a whole bunch of tools out there and I feel like it's always kind of, um, you know, Merchant Words will come out with something that looks really cool and then they'll be at the top for a little bit and then Helium 10 comes out with something really cool. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, I'm always kind of bouncing back and forth. I mean, I really love the people at Merchant Words. They have a new thing called Digital Shelf. Right. And if you really struggle with keyword, because keyword research, and, and if they're not doing this, you, you want to go back and rethink your processes. Keyword research for optimization should be completely different than key, uh, keyword research for PPC. Because right. keyword uh, research for the listing is single words, white house. Mm -hmm. And here we're looking for white house together. Um, house white doesn't work, right? So uh, the order makes a difference over here. Yeah. So um, with the keyword research for the listings, if you just find you're not really good at that piece, um, they have a new thing called a uh, digital shelf and mm -hmm. you put in your listing and then it pops up with a bunch of other listings and it kind of says like these are the words that similar listings are looking uh, that are using that are your, yours are not. And uh, here's the key, the main keywords that we should look at and you can delete irrelevant ones it's 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 not quite perfect yet it's not exactly where I would love it to be but it's it's pretty helpful helium 10 has some great things we use scribbles a lot so yeah. of course we use magnet and cerebo and but scribbles is probably the thing that we use the most um, because we we use the keywords we give the keywords to the writers and we say use as many of these as you can as a side note um, these are the words I want put in but write for the customer first and yeah. then what we'll do is we'll kind of replace some words we want to write for the conversion mm -hmm. um, and then uh, SEM rush is starting to get into some of the Amazon space and so their their tools are in beta so that means you always want to check them out and if they're not right for you circle back in another three months um, but they have one that's a, a, a split testing tool 
Yeah. And so, uh, and that's free because uh, you could use Splitly, but I think Splitly is like, it's not like $200 a month or something like that, I feel like. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you can, you, you can, and they also have one that uh, kind of tracks changes uh, in your keyword ranking. That one's still a little bit younger, but it's, they, they've got, and they've got some other tools, I think, that are coming out soon. Um, and then I have a listing support group, a Facebook group that I can share with you guys if you'd like. Yes. Um, if, if you go to marketplaceblueprint.com forward slash Facebook. There's a lot of people that, you know, we can all moan and gripe together about how the catalog team is missing and how much we miss them. And we'll buy them all the coffee if they just come back to us. <laughs> um, you know, but, you know, but people are stuck with flat files or people have a question about something. Um, there's a good group of people in there that can answer some stuff as well. Okay, that's good. So look, Robin, you've, you've, you've given us so much information in a short span of time. Uh, there's so much to uh, take, away, take away and learn about, so much tools you've talked about. So if somebody is to get in touch with you to ask any questions, where is the best place to go, Robin? Yeah, the best place to go is marketplaceblueprint.com. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can reach me at Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, like why does she talk so much, uh, at marketplaceblueprint.com. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can also find me in the Facebook group. Um, we're pretty easy to get to. Um, and, uh, you know, occasionally we'll do like retreats and stuff like that and courses, but, uh, not right now because, you know, pandemic land. Yeah. 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 Good. So uh, look, thank you very much for your time, Robin, today. So, um, and, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, catch up again in some time soon and pick up another topic perhaps. And, and, and yeah, maybe we can talk about campaign structure. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. So there you go. We will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll next time we'll talk about campaign structure with Robin uh, sometime soon. So yeah, thanks everyone for listening today, and thanks Robin again. All right, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.